Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. How much for one day delivery? You've got to be kidding. Who pays that? Hey, this is Michelle Spiva, your practical priestess of wisdom. And I want to welcome you to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. So I want you to join me on the flip as we get into looking at some things called turnaround time. And I want to ask you, what's your turnaround time? I'll see you on the flip. Hello, and thank you for joining me on today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. So today we're going to be really practical, and we're going to be talking about some uh, skill sets that command a lot of money. And if you're good at this, then you are going to be set. Let's just face it, you know. And so as I'm uh, going through and looking at uh, things that I had planned um, to look more into, I noticed that I had an emergency and I was uh, looking through some papers, you know, how you have to declutter and all of that. And I saw where I had to pay an exorbitant amount, extortion fees, I'm just telling you, just being straight up, uh, to get something uh, to a place uh, where I was going to be flying in. And so I had to have it mailed directly there. It had to be one day. And then not only that, I had to pay receiving fees. Yeah, I had to pay receiving fees uh, for the hotel to receive it. And I looked and I was like, oh my God, this is just highway robbery. But then I looked back at the fact that it was highway robbery, but it was highway robbery that I had and was willing to pay because it was what I needed at that time. And I was paying for somebody's ability to give me direct attention to get what I needed done. And at possibly the uh, ignoring of other people. And so that was a premium. And it was amazing that I was like, wow, why didn't I ever see it this way before? And just so you know, there are people who make a living at doing this kind of stuff and they're brilliant at it. You might uh, be one of them. I am fascinated with concierges so much so that in a few of my books and my different pen names and and lines, I've written about them because they fascinate me so much that a person can take their eye for detail and give you direct attention to make things happen for you that you couldn't make happen for yourself and do it in a way that is quick, it's efficient, effective, and it is as simple as can be. And they rightfully so get paid a lot of money. And so there is a burgeoning um, industry where people have actual personal concierges, not just for a hotel, not just for when you go on some kind of business trip or or you go on a swanky vacation. There are people who make a living off of making sure that they have good or great turnaround time. You ask them to get something done and voila, they don't tell you how they get it done. They just make it get, they just make sure that they get it done. And I was looking at that, you know, we all need to aspire to do better in um, particular areas that will bode well for us. And so today, you guys, we are going to be talking about how to increase our turnaround time, hopefully without compromising the quality of what it is we do, we produce, and we make. Okay. Um, A little while ago, I did, uh, not wow, it was recent, but I did a podcast called Build Something. And 
It's part of that makers movement that is going on right now where people are returning to the art of craftsmanship and of producing something that's tangible, something that you did it with your hands. And as I was putting together together today's um, show notes and just, you know, consulting with wisdom, um, it came to me that I talked about something yesterday that I need to talk about today. And um, with yesterday's podcast, I talked a lot about design and how I'm learning uh I was, I'm actually working through a book by Don Norman called The Design of Everything, Everyday Things, and how he talks about the practicality of understanding how not only your product will fit in the world, but how people who will interact with your product will fit in the world with the product. And so there's this concept that he talks about, about the two different knowledges. And he talks about knowledge uh, from the world or in the world and knowledge in the head. And it's very interesting. And you guys, I'm just going to say it. If you get the book, take some time because it's, it's a, it's kind of, it's not a textbook. It reads very easy, but there's a lot of information in it and you need to have time to let it marinate. So don't just rush through the book, take time to actually look at it. And so the uh, name name of yesterday's podcast uh, is, is it failure or is it bad design? But looking at that, when you look at the, um, the understanding of knowledge in the world, it's all about interpretation. It's all about what can be understood and gleaned from just interacting with the product, the situation, the circumstance, whatever it is, without any kind of direction, no signage, no instruction booklet, nobody demonstrating it for you and you come upon it and it's supposed to be able uh, to present itself in a way where you can interpret what it's for and how to use it. Now, in another book, and y'all know I love me some books, in a book uh, by the name of Curious, and I've, I've talked about that one a lot as well, um, the author presents an example of this very thing where uh, there was a, not was because he's still around, but there is a researcher who, when he went to different rural Indian villages in India, um, he noticed that the children were just as curious as other children and that curiosity was not necessarily uh, born of privilege or um advancements in society, but that privilege, I mean, privilege, excuse me, that curiosity is with us no matter uh, whether we are abased or abound. And so to prove to see what would happen and how much the children would uh, operate um, in their curiosity, he set up a computer and it was connected to the internet and he set it up in their school, in their little village. He left no instructions and that was it. When he came back, the children had taught themselves not only how to get on the internet, how to use it, but they had also taught themselves how to start programming it. And he was like, what? And so at, now that book does not talk about the, the knowledge uh, in the world, but he did say something that connected uh, these two concepts together. And that was that the children interacted with the computer to the point of understanding that it has uh, a reason for being there. But then he also talked about knowledge in the head. And when we talk about knowledge in the head, we talk about how well learned you are and how you're able to learn based on meaning and structure. And so the children worked together as a group to take all of their knowledge and put it together to be able to learn this. Now, here's the kicker where the turnaround time comes in. He was not gone very long. Uh, <laughs> he, you know, it's kind of like he does his rounds and I don't remember the exact turnaround, but it was a very short time. And that was what made this feat that these children had pulled off so remarkable that by the time he came back, around for the, um, the, you know, his time to check on them, they had advanced so much. And he was so excited that he gave them um, more complexities and more um, 
uh, better computers and and it they just took off and so it was amazing and looking at that uh, or remembering um that as well as the example from the book on design i was like oh my gosh turnaround time is a skill that we can use and it is a skill that can be um grown and finessed. And I was like, wow. And so I'm sharing this with you guys. So there are two components that wisdom is kind of like showing us. And well, the first thing is, is that if you are aware that how fast you're able to do something with excellence is going to put you in the upper echelons of society when it comes to um, livelihood and uh, workability, where you'll never go hungry because you have these special skills. That's one thing. But then there is another that the wisdom smack started coming to me. And that is that using this knowledge in the world, meaning how good is your observational skill? How good are you at deducement? You know, how good is your Columbo or your uh, Sherlock Holmes side of things? You know, how much are you able to glean from what you see with nobody telling you? That's going to be knowledge in the world. But then here is the other side. And I'm going to be honest with you. This is the side that I'm finding that I'm having to work on because it is my weaker side. It might not be yours, but it is my weaker side. And it came from looking at how uh, the the two books that I just mentioned, along with some other books that I pulled, you know, from my memory uh, and my database. And that is knowledge in the head. Now, you would think knowledge in the head would be all about what you know, right? Yeah, I did too, until I started realizing that you can increase your turnaround time and your skill for turnaround time through collaboration and through group and teamwork. And there's another book (laughs) that um, I, I read by Dr. Jane McGonigal called Reality is Broken. And it's all about looking at how we use computer gaming to uh, make sense of our world. And in it, she does a section where she talks about the famous World of Warcraft, the game itself. And if you just take a moment to Google and uh, Google Facebook groups or or Discord groups or uh, Reddit subgroups around these different gaming platforms, what you will notice is that there is a spider web of collaborations that happen. And because people are becoming parts of these raiding teams or questing teams, they are learning the skill of turnaround. Case in point, when you look at gaming, a lot of times if if it's like a questing game or a venturing game, what people will do is they will form teams. A lot of times these teams will have components of five people in them and I'm not a big gamer. Well, I'm not a gamer. I'll just be honest. I'm not one. I'm an observer. But usually these teams, depending on what type of setup it is, they will have a ranged person who is like an archer or a thief or a rogue or something like that. They will have a melee fighter, you know, hand-to-hand combat, close combat person. They will have a tank who is kind of like the bodyguard who takes all of the uh, forward assault uh, brunts of things to give the others uh, opportunities to advance. They will have someone who is a healer or what they would call a healer or a cleric where as soon as someone gets hurt, they heal them. And then they'll possibly have Uh, like something like a paladin or an alchemist or someone who can work some magic, you know, throw some fireballs. And um, the thing is, is it's not about knowing the specifics of what these people do as much as it is about the outcome. And that is that when people want to advance in these games, they are really saying, I need to speed up my turnaround time. And because they're wanting to speed up their turnaround time, they are willing to go out and quest with a group of people because doing it on your own takes you longer. Now, yes, there are people who play these games, they play them by themselves, and they do very well and go very far, but they are few and far between. And so it comes to the point where because we live in a society with a lot of people who play a lot of games, their turnaround time is increasing. And I want to ask you, is yours? 
are you were you even aware before we started talking about this that this is a uh well touted skill that people who have money to hire people to do things are looking to pay for you see the paradigm is shifting where and we've talked about this before in the adaptability quotient podcast and the other times it's been mentioned. And that is that when people are uh, looking for skills nowadays, they're looking for MacGyvers. They're looking for people that if today I tell you, you have to code and tomorrow I tell you, you have to go out and scout uh, for new land. And then the next day I tell you, you have to go and set up an orphanage. And the next day I tell you, you have to run a soup kitchen and all these different things. They need people who have high adaptability. Well, guess what? When you start learning the skill of increasing your turnaround to producing and to getting things done, you also become more agile and more adaptable. And the reason why you do this is because in your adaptability, you have to start working with different types of people, different personalities. You have to become more diplomatic. You have to understand nuances of all of those intelligences that came before this AQ one of adaptability. You've got to have some intelligence to be able to talk to people. You have to have an emotional management intelligence to keep your cool when people don't act the way you want them to. And then you have to have social intelligence intelligence to know how to read a room and interact with people and know how not to rub them the wrong way. And then you have to be adaptable. Yes, you have to learn and grow and stretch. You can't come and say, well, this is how it's done in my my neck of the woods and that's the only way it can be done. Or you will be ostracized. You will uh, not get jobs. You will not be able to advance and people will be running past you and you're running as if you've got on um, cement boots. And so it comes now to where we're being actually kind of forced to learn these types of skill sets. So let's talk a little bit more about this whole turnaround time and how it can work for you. There is an acronym in the online business world that is uh, prevalent in uh, how to uh, provide good services for people that they're willing to pay for. And the acronym is ASS. Yep, you heard it, ASS. And that acronym stands for automation, simplification, and and systemization slash syndication. All right, so what this means is, is is that if you learn these acronyms and what you can do or what you can provide, people are willing to pay you for them. So people are willing to pay you to automate something. If you can take something and turn it into a macro or into an application that will do it for you, think of the calculator. That is automation at its best. Um, When I say at its best, uh, meaning over the years, we had human calculators and now we have automated it to, for it to be machines that calculate for us. And then simplification. So when you look at uh, what's behind that, people are trying to save themselves time. They're trying to save themselves learning curves of discomfort. And they're trying to save themselves high failure rates because if something is complex, it has a higher potential to fail or to not work. And so people are willing to pay people to come in and make the service step by step, one, two, three recipe. And if you're able to take complex systems and things and turn them into recipes, you will get paid a lot of money or you will have a great reputation or you will have job security or whatever it is, but people will love you. And as long as you're able to simplify things, and here's the kicker, not only simplify, but show other people how to simplify things, you will really do well. And then this next one is systemization or syndication. And all that simply means is, is that you take the best of automation and simplification and then you put it into a replicable system. Meaning that if you do something, then you put it in a system where people just follow the steps that you said to do and they will get the same results. 
It goes back to making a recipe. It also goes back to a scientific method of how to replicate your research to come out with the same outcome so that your peers or colleagues can do the same thing. And then they validate that your system or your hypotheses or whatever it is works because you were so good at systematizing it that anybody can follow it. And that's a big achievement. But on the other side of that, the same S, it could be syndication. And when you have syndication, that can lead to franchising. So say, for instance, you figure out a way how to make an excellent soup of any kind with just three ingredients or whatever. And you figure out how to put this system together so that it can be replicated no matter where it is in the world. And people are willing to pay you to license to be able to use this system, use the branding and all this kind of stuff, that's called a franchise. And people do that over and over again. And the thing is, is when you go back and look at all of it, all of them boast a quick turnaround time. And so looking at uh, this, that's right in your face, if you are looking for ways to stand out, to make yourself more um, attractive, to colleagues or businesses, say, for instance, you're you're starting your business and you're looking for your angle. When you tout that you are able to turn around things with a quickness and with uh, without compromising quality, people's ears will perk up and their wallets will open and it will be easier for you. Now, here are some other things about the uh, the the underpinnings of what you want to focus on when you're looking at increasing your turnaround time. Now, we've already established that you need to have knowledge of the world. Yep. Uh, Meaning that you need to be able to have good deduction. You need to be able to interpret very well. And we've also understood that you need to have knowledge in the head and it doesn't have to be all of your knowledge. You can join teams, you can have colleagues, uh, you can have uh, buddies, work buddies uh, that you guys are working together, masterminds and all of that kind of stuff fall into that. But then this is the other thing. You, If you focus on uh, the ASS part of it, uh, figuring out ways to automate things, simplify them or put them into a system, you'll do well. But then here's the next thing. Understand that when you are trying to gain wisdom of developing this skill of turnaround time, make sure that you focus on how to uh, not focus on. But when you're starting to teach yourself these things, make sure you focus on how to get clear, clear to what goal you want. Solve one thing at one time. And once you get clear on that goal, then start working on the effectiveness, meaning how good is what I'm doing working to solve the problem, fix the issue, or create the the goal that I want. Once you get clear, once you start coming up with a real solution that works, then you want to work on how efficiently you do it. Go through and look at it. Everything that you do, all the steps you take and challenge them. Why are you here? Is there a better way? Is there something that um, is out the box that would do the same thing? Uh, am I choosing this step because it's been done before and I've limited my ability to look for different ways of doing things? Am I willing to tear up my process and try different things? Am I willing to split test? Meaning that I have a control group and then I have a test group and the bet- the best one wins until I get down to where I find nothing else that will win and, and then nothing else beats that control and I can get down to that. Now, I will say this, that there are a lot of people that do this. They don't articulate it this way, but they do. I have watched guys who open up deep car detailing um, on site, you know, come to your home and detail your cars and looking at them, their turnaround time is phenomenal. They can take your car and in two to three hours, make it look like it came right from the car lot, you know, uh, a fresh new car. And you look at all of the different systems they're using, the shortcuts that work because they have gotten them down by getting clear on what it is they want, making them highly effective, and then breaking them down to the only doing the most efficient things needed to get it 
turned around. And by being able to use that little trilogy of uh, clarity, effectiveness, and efficiency, they're able to then gain attention because when people see how good they are, especially if they come to your home, your neighbor's going to be like, hey, uh, how much do they charge? Can they do mine? And then you start to gain the attention of people and you become very well sought after. Now, I'm doing uh, this kind of teaching uh, and sharing of what I'm learning because times are changing. And I can't stress enough to let you know that when chaos is in the air, like sh- like she is, <laughs> and the sh- destruction and the messiness of everything changing, you have to be willing to open your eyes and all of your senses to a bigger awareness. And it's little things like this, like focusing on how to have a faster turnaround time, but not only a faster turnaround time, how to be so clear and focused on that one thing that you do where you have an enviable turnaround time on what you can do. And knowing that that is what you're going to put out there to the world and you're going to work on it all the time to get it done, it will create so many avenues for you. A family member of mine just this week was like, I can't understand how you live the life that you live, you know, and I and I had to remind them that for me, I have to always be pushing uh, myself to figure out what keeps me in the game, what keeps me relevant, what keeps me going and uh, what what keeps me um able to survive because I live in a world that is always new, new, new. And if you do anything online, if you uh, sell any kind of goods and services, people are fickle. Jeff Bezos says it uh, often. He says we are obsessed with our, we are insanely obsessed with our customers. And he says that they know a few things about them and that their customers are irrationally fickle. They have changing interest, changing taste, and changing demands all the time. And that by just trying to make sure that they are the best, at, you, you guessed it, the turnaround of satisfying customers' whims, that is what they build their company on. And so when you look at turnaround time and you look at Amazon, Amazon is winning the game on turnaround time of goods and services. If you look at turnaround time for entertainment, at this particular time, Netflix is winning the game on turnaround time. When they find that something works, they quickly go back, they shoot a whole new season, and they give it to you way faster than the traditionally um, touted entertainment giants of the networks. And whereas the networks, you know that you're not going to see anything new until September, uh, Netflix will have, will have a season in January and then they'll have another season in, um, in June. If, if, you know, if it, if it goes well and they turn it around, they have even gone on record as saying that their direct competition is sleep. S-L-E-E-P, sleep. And they even have the nerve to say, and they're winning. Their competition is sleep. They want you to binge watch. They have no problems with you watching an entire season of something over a weekend because guess what? They're going to have an entire season of something else queued up for you and ready for you to go the next weekend. And they are dwarfing uh, what major studio releases are doing because they understand that the turnaround of the streaming service is what people like because guess what it's automated you click a button and then it cues it up and you don't even have to tell it pick the next episode because it will play you if you don't touch your 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 tv your computer or however you're streaming it on your phone it'll just keep playing until it's at the end and then it'll then it'll start advertising another series right after it until you tell it, go back, you know, to the to the browse menu. And you can just be sitting there and watching TV over, I mean, just one episode after another. And they've hit this sweet spot where they were very clear. 
They're very effective on what on the journey they take you on, and they're very efficient. And if you notice, when you look at their seasons, a lot of these seasons range anywhere from five episodes up to 22 episodes, depending on what it is, what genre it is, what age group it's appealing to. And they, they've gotten this down to a science. And it is because of this science that, that um, they've automated it, simplified it, and systematized it. You can tell that they're very clear with their intentions, very effective, and efficiently deliver things to you. And thus, they capture your attention. And this is the big thing, that when you start excelling at turnaround time, what you are actually getting paid for is for convenience, the price of convenience. And I will tell you, the price of convenience for somebody is exceptionally high. It is astronomically and aspirationally high. When you can offer somebody convenience and you offer it to them in a quick turnaround, you can basically name your price. And so that is something that wisdom is saying, hey, 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 you need to get on this. You need to start paying attention because this is what your world is starting to look like. And you don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be thinking that the world is going to pay you for what you know, because (laughs) maybe, but they will pay somebody for what they know if they know that this person can continue to grow and uh, learn on the spot, be adaptable, and then turn around things with ease and quickness. And their money will go to them every day. So take this as a wisdom smack and be great. (laughs) All right. So guess what? Yep. My time is up. I do thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spiva, your practical priestess of wisdom with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. So don't forget to check the show notes and uh, uh, leave us comments and like, share and subscribe. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.